What's up guys? Welcome to episode 6 of Bana Inku's Blood Rage painting series. Today we'll be painting the Mighty Troll. But before we get started painting this awesome miniature, I just want to celebrate that we now have over 200 subscribers on the Bana Inku channel, which is just so cool. It's been so cool to watch this channel grow and I'm excited to see where it's gonna go. So that being said, I just wanna thank all of you who subscribed and for all of you who haven't yet subscribed, you should definitely think about it. Anyway, now that we've celebrated that and I've given my super convincing pitch to subscribe, let's get started painting this awesome mini. To start this guy off, I sprayed some basic skin tone on all the skin areas. Now I apologize for the blown out footage, I'm still figuring out the best setting for when I'm airbrushing and here I set my apertures a little too low, so yeah, sorry about that. After applying that solid base coat of basic skin tone, I sprayed a 2 to 1 mix of leather brown and basic skin tone on all the areas where shadows will be being cast, as well as on the hands and forearms to start creating some nice smooth transitions. I then spray leather brown on the hands as well as the bottoms of the feet and in the deeper recesses of the model to really pump up that contrast and make all those muscles start to pop. I'm using an airbrush to do all this, but these same transitions can be done using a brush and your favorite blending method. After that, I came back with some basic skin tone and picked out the very tops of all the muscles and also did some additional blending between the mid-tones and the highlights to get some really smooth transitions. Then, to give the skin some more depth and really start popping out those details, I washed all the lighter skin areas with a thin mix of Seraphim Sepia and Rikun Flesh Shade, and then washed the darker skin areas using Agrax Earth Shade. Now, it's important to note that anytime you're washing a larger area like this, particularly when using these Citadel shades, it's important to use a slightly larger brush, which can hold a greater amount of wash, and to continue to apply the wash to the model until you've completely covered the desired area. Because if you don't do this and you only apply the wash to certain areas of the model at a time, You'll start getting these lines forming where the wash is dried and this can be really hard to fix. So you don't have to rush through it or anything, just keep the brush moving, don't stop in the middle, and everything will turn out just fine. With the skin now shaded, I reestablished some of those original highlights by dry brushing on some basic skin tone to the lighter areas and leather brown to the darker ones. I then applied BC Brown to the loincloth and then shaded it down with some Agrex Earthshade.
I also applied this shade to that nice troll butt crack because we all know a troll just isn't a troll without showing a little bit of cheekage. Or as I like to call it, butt cleavage. After that, I reestablished the mid tone on the loincloth using Beastie Brown. At this point, I realized I hadn't actually finished the skin and it just felt wrong to me to keep working on the loincloth while the skin wasn't done. So I took a break from the loincloth for a bit so I could finish up all that skin. Here I'm using my small detail brush to pick out all those raised areas of the skin and make them really stand out using basic skin tone. I then picked out all the details on the darker skin using a 4 to 1 mix of leather brown and basic skin tone. After that, I mixed together some turquoise and black in a 2 to 1 ratio and started painting on all those tattoos. Originally, I was going to try and match the tattoos to the ones he's got on his card art, but I quickly decided that that just wasn't going to work for me, so I just went to town freehanding some tribal tats. The first few were a little rough, and I probably should have done some warm up ones on like a test model or a piece of paper or something, but you know, whatever. At this point, there was absolutely no way I was going to go back and try and fix the skin and start over, so I just kept going with it and figured I'd just see how it turned out. And I think in the end, it turned out looking pretty sweet. I'm especially proud of that kanji I put on his right shoulder. Which for those of you that are wondering, that's the kanji representation of Troll. Or at least I'm pretty sure it is. With all that skin now complete, I happily returned to highlighting the loincloth by applying a couple of glazes of a 1 to 1 mix of Beastie Brown and Ochre Brown. I then intensified those highlights just a little bit further by applying some glazes of Ochre Brown. Then to finish off those highlights, I used ochre brown to do some edge highlighting and two brush blending. After that, I picked out all the bones, teeth, and fingernails using bone white and then gave them a wash of smoky ink followed by some highlights again using bone white. This is one of my favorite ways of painting bones because just like with golds and silvers, I think smoky ink is a perfect wash for giving those bones a nice old weathered look.
one quick thing I'd like to clarify real quick about this wash as well as some of the other washes I use that aren't store bought washes is that rather than trying to mix these washes up each time and trying to refigure out the right ratios and all that I chose to mix these up in some 15 milliliter dropper bottles so whenever I need them they're right there ready to go. So the ratios that I put up in the paint splatters above are detailing the ratios I used when creating those 15 milliliter bottles of wash. Just wanted to clarify that just in case that's been kind of confusing for anybody. With all those bones now complete, I moved on to painting all the gold areas by first applying an undercoat of leather brown followed by some brass. This is one of many ways of painting gold and in my opinion one of the best. Another method which works decently well is painting golds over silvers which I do a little later in the video when painting all the little doodads that are in his hair. Next I painted all the silver parts with Model Air Steel. This color along with all the other silvers from the Model Air paint range are marketed as airbrush paints but I have found that they work extremely well when applied with just a normal paintbrush. They apply super smooth and are really easy to thin and they're just a great paint so I highly recommend checking these out if you haven't already. I then washed down all those gold and silver areas with some smoky ink to give the silver a nice weathered grimy look and to give a nice natural shade to all those golds. Then I applied some highlights to all those metals using solid gold and steel. After that, I carefully base coated all of his hair with black. Then I dry brushed down a couple different layers to bring out all the details of the hair First with dark sea gray, then with light gray, followed by a one to one mix of light gray and dead white, and finally a small dry brush of straight dead white to really pop things out. After applying all those highlights, I toned them down a bit and created some nice contrast by washing down all that hair with some black ink wash. Alternatively, I could have used some Nolan Oil or other pre-made black wash, but I've been trying to use my own washes a little more as they're a bit more cost effective and it's fun to alternate sometimes and use different things. Once that wash had fully dried, I picked out some of the details of the hair using dark sea gray. I then picked out all those little doodads in his hair using Model Air Steel and then like I mentioned earlier, painted over some of them with solid gold. I also picked out the little bone pieces he's got sticking in his hair using Bone White.
At this point, I'd come back from a bit of a break from painting this guy and had forgotten that I was needing to finish the doodads in his hair, so I started moving on to the hammer, and here I'm base coating the handle with a one to one mix of ochre brown and beastie brown. I then applied Agrax Earthshade to that handle to seep into all those crevices and start accentuating those beautiful details. Then I further popped out those details by dry brushing on some ochre brown. The particularly fun thing about this part was that I was actually doing this while bouncing my 5 month old son on my lap, trying to keep that little busybody from ripping the model out of my hands and flinging it onto the floor. I like to think that that little guy is going to make a fine little nerd someday. After that, I returned to working on the doodads in his hair and finished them up by giving him a little wash of smoky ink. I also applied this wash to those bones in his hair and then highlighted them with bone white just like we did before. Then I used dark sea grey to base coat all the stone. Then to create a more natural stone effect, I used this cool little stipple brush that I found at the art store to dab on some light gray. Being a bit more difficult brush to control, I did at times get some paint on the hand and other places which I just had to wipe off quick using a damp brush. I also ended up getting paint all over that little wood piece on the very end of the hammer which I quickly gave up trying to clean and ended up just repainting it after I was all done exactly like we did before. Next I continued creating that natural stone effect by stippling on some brighter spots of dead white followed by some darker spots of dark sea grey. It probably would have been a good idea to mask off his arm, hand, and that little wood piece before I started doing this but I didn't think about that till after so I just went back and repinned the areas that I needed to and kind of cleaned up as I went. Then to start bringing out those details in the runes and give the stone a light dirty look, I applied a thin down wash of Agrax Earthshade. After giving that wash plenty of time to dry, I dry brushed some dark sea grey followed by some light grey to help pick out some of those edges. I then applied a wash of black ink to further bring out those details. If I were to do this again, I'd thin this wash down with some additional water or wash base before I applied it so it wouldn't darken down that natural stone effect quite as much because this wash in its unthinned form ended up darkening things down just a little bit farther than I'd anticipated. Once that wash had fully dried, I dry brushed on some dark sea grey and light grey to pick out all those stony details once again. After that, I started picking out all the gems using some black green ink and then applied a highlight to the lower curve of each of those gems using Necrotite Green. For those who have never painted gems before, this may seem a little strange since highlights are usually placed on the very top areas of a model. However, with gems we place the highlights on the bottom so as to simulate the light that's reflected as it passes through their translucent structures. I then finished off the gems by adding a small light reflection in the upper right of each gemstone with some dead white. Then I finished off the hammer by picking out those little accent pieces using some brass, then washed them down with some smoky ink and applied some highlights using solid gold. After finishing up the hammer, I picked out his eyes using some dead white. 
I finished off the troll by painting the base black and then protecting the entire model with a coat or two of gloss varnish followed by some matte varnish. Then as a final touch, I applied a dab of gloss varnish to all the gemstones to leave them nice and shiny. And with that, the troll is now complete and ready to join the battle. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you're enjoying this Blood Rage painting series. It's been so much fun for me to create and it's been super awesome reading all your encouraging comments that you've been leaving on the videos. And it's just been a blast being able to interact with some of you and see some of the models that you guys have painted. So just want to say thank you guys for that and hope you guys will keep joining. Also, for those interested in seeing more Bonnie Iku goodness, head over and check out my Patreon, Facebook, and Instagram. Troll complete! Bonnaroo out!